Welcome to the channel, I'm Rob and this is part one of how to paint an Imperial Fist Contemptor Dreadnought. This back in the day was one of my first ever models that I was able to paint and I painted it in a Blood Angel scheme and it felt only right that now that we've got the new Horus Heresy box set coming that I painted up uh, probably the last resin Contemptor Dreadnought that I'll paint for some time, at least the last one uh, that isn't Legion specific. Uh, so I thought I'd take you through how to paint it in my style, ready for the new Horus Heresy. So in terms of preparation, the first thing that we need to do uh, when painting Imperial Fists uh, Contemptor Dreadnought or any Imperial Fists, you know, this uh, tutorial guide will be handy for any vehicle or any infantry that you do, is you need a decent white primer. Um, I used uh, Color Forge, uh, they're matte white. Um, it's a great primer, great coverage. I think it was just two thin coats and uh, it covered it up nicely. And then any black elements uh, that you want, um, just whatever black you want to want, be it Games Workshop or Color Forge, all of them are really, really good. Um, but I just find with the Color Forge that they're just particularly matte and the uh, the paint just clings to it really, really nicely. I've not found any problems uh, with it kind of rubbing off uh, either, even when it's sort of um, uh, primed over primed over resin. Really important, I think, when dealing with Imperial Fist, that you have something that breaks up that uh, breaks up that yellow color. In terms of the colours we're going to use, we're going to use Flat Yellow by Tamiya and just a reminder not to use uh, something like Vallejo Thinner, uh, you'll need to use their own uh, thinner for that one. Leather Brown by Vallejo and the last colour for the yellow is we're going to use uh, Game Ink by Vallejo and their brown ink. In terms of the black elements, uh, we'll need Coal Black and Pastel Green by AK Interactive. Uh, but you could use an ivory if you really wanted to. Now, nothing uh, too fancy here. Nothing, um, uh, nothing really exciting. Nothing that you probably don't already know how to do. Uh, but the Tamiya paints, we can't obviously brush them on. They need to be airbrushed on. If you don't have an airbrush yet, why not get yourself one? It will speed things up. Uh, but just make sure when you apply your yellow base coat that um, you get really good coverage. So a couple of thin coats, make sure it's dried in between each one, but just make sure you get as many of those yellow, uh, all those kind of that white undercoat as possible. You don't want any of the, the, the white shining through. So once we've got a decent yellow color, uh, the first step is to use the Vallejo Leather Brown. All you do is thin it. I usually do it 50-50. Um, nothing more than that and we just want to hit it in the darkest area so we're just laying our shadows here and we're working backwards so we're not using a, a pre-shade or a pre-highlight uh, but I am being careful using the angles of the model to be able to shade the elements that I want to be darker to add contrast to the model so you can see here everything that the light would touch if the light's coming down from the top every flat surface uh, is um, uh, will stay yellow and then any part that is uh, darker will get that um, a spray of leather brown. Make sure you use thin coats when you do this. I mean, you could probably use leather brown straight through the airbrush, but you know, just add a little bit of thinner I think is important. You can start to see where I'm focusing on, so the top of the shoulder pads there, um, and then right on the underside of the main torso element. And uh, in terms of the top of the, um, top of the model, you know, it's a it's a, a cylinder shape, so we want that um, the the central axis of that um, axis of that light shining through the middle as well. But you can use this as a guide to be able to help you. In terms of the uh, shin guards, all I do is just uh, spray the center, uh, working your way down on each of the sides of it. But you can use this as a reference as you go through. Another thing to note on this particular model is that I've um, I've also shaved off the um, the Aquila on the front of it as well. Uh, that didn't take too much work. I just shaved it off with a um, with a sharp knife and then um, 
uh, just sanded it down using sort of uh, various different uh, sandpaper so it was nice and smooth. I knew that I wanted to put a nice transfer um, from the, uh, the set from Forge World, uh, which is the reason why I did it. But I also uh, saw you know some of the leaked images that we got last year of the uh, new box set. And I wanted it to be pretty similar to that, right? Um, so um, uh, part of the reason why I showed, showed that down, but I left the um, I left the uh, purity seals on. Um, I thought they were a nice touch in terms of the original Contempt of Dreadnought that Forge World did. I'm not sure whether or not Forge World um, sell this model anymore. I think it's probably now that's being replaced by the plastic one. Um, I, I'm not sure you can get it, but still a fantastic model that's really, really, uh, really poseable. The next step uh, that we need to do is we're going to use the brown ink. This will just add a little bit of warmth, depending on how much contrast you want within your model as well. You know, you could stop here at the leather brown and just have your imperial fists as two colours. You know, which is the the flat yellow and then uh, and then um, the leather brown. But I like to just warm it up. This warms it up really, really nicely. But it adds just that extra layer of contrast. You don't need too much of uh, this particular. Uh, this particular paint nice and thin 50 50 um, in terms of thinner and ink um, and just going into the very darkest uh, darkest areas you can start to see within the uh, in the video just the the level of contrast that we're able to get don't forget though that once um, once we start adding gloss varnishes our matte varnishes over that once we've had transfers once we've had oils once we've added um, streaking grime and things like that which we'll use on this uh, model later it will really knock back a lot of that contrast that we put on so you need to really up the level of contrast um, at this point uh, because it will be knocked back way further down the line so go further than you probably feel comfortable with um, but it will pay dividends in the long term as you can see I'm just focusing on all the elements of the model I think we've got about four different arms for this uh, for this contemptor it's all magnetized bit of a nightmare to paint when it's magnetized but having the options when you play is good and I just wanted to define some lines that I kind of forgot about on the original when I applied the leather brown, but I'm just adding it in with the with the brown ink. It doesn't matter too much. I mean, you could probably skip the leather brown if you wanted to make it even uh, simpler for yourself, um, but just reinforcing those shadows. And then in terms of the final step, uh, I did feel that I'd gone a little bit overboard with um, the brown elements, so I just wanted to bring some of the yellow back um, and what I'll, I'll do now is reinforce the highlights with that flat yellow and we won't go any more than this so in terms of your colours that you'll need to use in terms of airbrushing three colours that's it flat yellow from Tamiya uh, leather brown by Vallejo and brown ink by Vallejo as well but you can see we're just reinforcing the highlights here just to bring back that that yellow colour I'm just focusing in particular on the places that I didn't hit with the brown. Just getting any overspray, just knocking it back. You can use this as a reference, as I said, but hopefully you get the idea. I've also based this uh, miniature before um, uh, before before painting sometimes it's just a little bit easier to to do it that way just so you can hold it and I'm not faffing around with um, pinning it um, on some cork or whatever um, sometimes I just like to um, yeah just stick it down to the stick it down to the base and get the base all sorted ready to ready to rock and roll I knew as well with the base that I just paint it with a hairy brush rather than using an airbrush I didn't feel like it was necessary to uh, do anything with the airbrush when it came to the base because I was going to use a lot of weathering powder so yeah your choice whatever you want to do you can leave it off or get your base sorted right we're going to move on to the black elements now so um, this is a really quick simple uh, recipe so we're going to hit it with coal black um, not an easy paint to get in the UK uh, but you could probably replace it with something like Incubi Darkness uh, from GW 
and then we're just using we're just highlighting here we've just been really careful with the highlights uh, because it's black and we don't want it to turn sort of a very dark blue um, so yeah just be quite precise uh, precise with these with these highlights but in terms of the transitions it's barely noticeable this cold black especially when it goes over a black uh, black undercoat so just to add um, some further highlights I use pastel green just a drop of pastel green no more than that just to lighten it up a little bit just almost add that shiny black element just to add a bit of interest as well and the sort of the bluey green color here contrasts nicely with the um, with the yellow you could just leave it as pure black if you wanted to um, but I think personally it just contrasts really really nicely and you can see there as well with the head I've just focused on one side that it's coming from because I knew the other side of the head was going to be um, in the kind of head alcove uh, so I only needed to highlight one side so think about your light, pl light placement as well and which direction your head is going to uh, going to be in and then finally just to reinforce those shadows if you feel like you've gone a little bit over the top uh, with your highlights and you want it to be black I always use um, uh, Black Templars contrast uh, paint really really nice um, nice and translucent color although you do have to thin it quite a lot when going through the airbrush um, and that just reinforces the shadows really really nicely but you do need to be quite precise especially when using it because you don't want to kill the highlight that you've just put down so make sure you just work that black into the black into the shadows And as you can see, and you can use this reference as well if you want to, this is where we're going and heading towards and this is what it will look like um, uh, by the end. But you can pause it now, use it as a reference and you can see um, where, I focused on the, uh, where, where I focused on the shadows. Now, um, we've got to the next stage, the unfortunate stage, the time consuming stage is the, uh, is the uh, edge highlighting and I've speeded up uh, this section for you um, but it is an important section you could do a lot of this stage with battle damage and we'll talk about that in part two of this uh, in this video series but the lines and the contempt are, are just amazing and you want to emphasize those lines and the way that we do that is by doing a little bit of edge highlighting now we don't need to edge highlight the entire model um, it's not an heavy metal piece that we're going for and it's not a competition piece that we're going for this is a sort of a really high tabletop uh, gaming piece uh, that I'll use in my my own army but I did want to focus on uh, kind of particular areas and draw the eye to particular areas so for me I want the uh, person who looks at the model to look particularly at the the head um, the stripe down the head that I'll eventually put on it as well and then that um, uh, that transfer in the center but that also requires me to uh, really focus on uh, picking out and making areas around the head nice and light so I'll focus on the torso in particular the shoulder pads as well I've um, on the wet palette I've put phalanx uh, water yellow which is one that I always use to edge highlight my imperial fists but I've also used a little bit of ice yellow there as well and I'll use a bit of ice yellow mixed with phalanx water uh, Yellow, I think it's called Phalanx Water Yellow. Uh, whichever one it's from Games Workshop, let's have a look. Ah, no, it's just Phalanx Yellow. So with Phalanx Yellow, uh, plus a little bit of um, Ice Yellow by Vallejo, uh, if you mix those two together, we can use those on the tip-top highlights, particularly on those uh, corner elements. But as I say, this is the time-consuming bit, and I think lots of people... Um, it might say heresy models don't need edge highlighting and certainly you can do a lot with battle damage and a bit of sponging to emphasize those uh, lines of the sculpt in different ways uh, but i think that for me personally edge highlighting a few key areas is really really important um, just to as i say make it more readable and you can see here now that i've mixed in a little bit of ice yellow and i focused on the the lightest areas only with that bit so um, when we look at the model and where we highlight it again with that final um, highlight of flat yellow that's where I want to be using the ice yellow so around the uh, at the top of the 
the head and at the bottom of the head as well where it sits in place in the contemptor. I was quite excited by this point when I did the model as well because I was really excited about choosing the um, choosing the the transfer that would sit in the middle. I wasn't quite sure what I would uh, what I would use, but I was able to find a a really nice one from the Imperial Fists um, uh, range that the Forge World um, produce, and I think that one was from a from a banner. Um, and I was able to kind of chop up the banner and get one with a nice uh, laurel leaves and then um, a really nice Imperial Fist, um, uh, Imperial Fist symbol as well. I did consider with this model um, kind of painting the studs, but I um, I think just edge highlighting a few uh, studs here and there I think is probably enough. Uh, but you can paint them in a metallic colour if you really, really want to. This bit now, I'm just reinforcing those key elements and where I want the, or where the light is um, uh, striking the model with that mixture of ice yellow and phalanx yellow as well. If you haven't got a wet palette, I'd really suggest investing in one. They make life so much easier. I wanted to emphasize particular, um, particularly on that torso again, um, I wanted to kind of emphasize that as a key area um, and get some really tasty contrast in it as well. So um, I glazed some phalanx water or phalanx yellow um, into the parts, into the lightest parts here, just where it meets that edge and just on the um, that nice cylinder as well. So I just kind of glazed it in, brought it to the center and then same again, I added a little bit of um, ice yellow to that mix and exactly the same process. We're just drawing it into the center just to make it brighter than the entire, sort of the rest of the model. And I think that, you know, I considered at this point, well, should I do the same with the top of the feet or should I do the same with the top of the, uh, top of the thighs or the top of the shin parts there? But actually I only really wanted the eye to be drawn to the head. And, and this is a really quick and easy way to do it, which is just the surrounding area of the head, just bright, brighten those areas up. But again, you can see I'm just reinforcing those key elements just with pure phalanx, uh, phalanx yellow, just the glaze of that, just to brighten it up a little bit. I haven't done this on every single model uh, that I have with my um, uh, Imperial Fists. And I certainly wouldn't do this on something bigger than a Contemptor Dreadnought. Um, I wouldn't do this stage with a tank. Might do it with a Leviathan, but even then, I probably wouldn't. I think this is as, as kind of a bigger model I was going to reinforce and kind of get extra, um, extra highlights. But it just adds to that contrast. And remember, by the time we use oils and things like that, we're really going to knock this back an awful lot. So it's important that we have those high levels of contrast at very, very early stage. Right, let's have a look now at um, edge highlighting the black. So again, edge highlighting is really important, particularly with black. You could probably get away with not doing uh, not doing the uh, yellow, but certainly with black, I think that if you're not going to highlight it with the airbrush, you've got to um, you've got to edge highlight it in some uh, some way. Uh, so this is just our mix of the pastel green by AK and then the coal black. Coal black is quite thin. Um, uh, so I struggled um, a little bit with just getting that edge highlight down. I think I needed to reinforce it in a couple of places, 
just to make sure that I got a good, uh, decent coat. But just picking out key areas, and I don't think I went higher than this in terms of the edge highlight. I didn't want it too bright at all. And then, um, really important that we pick out, uh, you know, the under part of the eye and the key features of the of the head as well, because um, as we said throughout this video, I really wanted the eye to be drawn towards the 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 head, and edge highlighting those kind of key elements is really, really really important. So that's it for uh, this portion of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, in the next portion of the video, we will be looking at transfers and uh, battle damage. Uh, so pick, up, pick yourself up a Contempt Treasure If you've got one uh, laying around the house, then uh, give it a go. Make sure uh, you tag me in the videos. I'd love to see what you uh, have come up with. Um, and uh, yes, thanks ever so much uh, for supporting the channel. Please make sure you like and subscribe and see you for the next one.